So what the heck happened to the market today? <laughs> I bet you weren't expecting that. Well, this is Randy Kirk. And uh, if you like this kind of content, then you know what to do. Uh, we now have gotten the number that I was looking for on Patreon. That doesn't mean we don't want more folks. I will be doing a video tomorrow that'll kind of set the stage for what I want to do on Patreon, which I think is going to be extremely exciting. So I'm still looking for folks that want to join, but we've got a nice group now and uh, for masterminding and spitballing and just having a great time. And so if you'd like to be part of that, go ahead and do the Patreon thing. And then comments. I'm looking for lots of comments. And today would be a great day for comments. So let's start with um, why did the market go up? Well, I'm sorry, why did the market, why did Tesla go up 7% when the market was basically yeah, flattish? Uh, NASDAQ up, Dow down, or was, whoops. Hmm. Why did Tesla go up when the market was flattish? I mean, sure, the Dow was, you know, down um, a fair piece. The NASDAQ was up a fair piece. And this is kind of uh, not what I would have expected necessarily with a CPI that did what it did. But let's go and think a little deeper about the CPI in a minute. But let's talk about Tesla. The other day I suggested, remember, I'm not an investment advisor. This is just for your amusement. <laughs> the other day I said, as Tesla went up and up and up like crazy, more than double from its 101 low, I said, look, there's going to have to be some kind of profit taking. There's going to have to be an adjustment. Could be 50%. That's what you normally think of in terms of a, a, a rebound from that kind of a radical increase. But I also modified my comment by saying, well, it probably won't be 50% because what the Tesla huge increase was basically coming off of a completely oversold situation. I mean, it was stupidly oversold. Uh, there was no explanation. There was really no explanation for it. It was just completely wrong. So the number around $200 a share is still not right. It's nowhere close to what Tesla should be valued at at this particular point in time. But given the market's continued constraint with regard to um, risk on, there's still not a risk on environment. It's definitely still a risk off, maybe getting close to neutral, but I would say, still say it's a risk off environment. Um, then Tesla has to basically do it all on its own. And how do you do that? Well, you become a value proposition while still being a go-go company. And that combination is rare. Uh, sure, Apple has that reputation over many years, but not like Tesla. It's, it's, it's an order of magnitude greater. Well, okay, not actually, but it's still a massive in, increase compared to what Apple type increases have been. So you're talking about, again, 50% a year in revenues and almost 100% per year in, in, uh, in the uh, profits. Who does that at this size, at, certainly at this market cap? So um, my recommendation or my thoughts the other day were that Tesla would rebound from those highs because there would be profit taking. People would be like, yeah, I just made a lot of money. I'm going to get out of here. And that happened. And then it dropped down a, a completely opposite the market, just like it had gone up against the market. Then it went down as the market was going up. And so that had all the feelings, continue to have all the feelings of, of Tesla, uh, uh, the stock price being completely on its own, no longer following the macro, which it typically has for the last year. So today was the same thing. The macro was kind of middle-ish and Tesla went crazy. And that I believe was just bouncing off of what are still considered to be ridiculously low valuations for a company that's doing what it's doing. So that continues to be my thesis. It may continue to be your thesis. I don't know, but I'm, I would be buying here. I'm, I still got a little bit uh, 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 of money in cash right now, very small amount of money in cash right now, uh, just in case there's an opportunity along the way. I don't want to be completely 100% uh, in the market, but 
uh, I would not hesitate to buy at these levels. If I was sitting on a lot of cash right now, I would definitely be buying at these levels. So the my 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 basic understanding, my basic feeling about what happened today is Tesla is continuing to go back to where it should be. I continue to believe that is 400 this year. I continue to believe that is 700 next year. And I'm basing that on the, just again, the increase in sales, the increase in profits. Uh, and that's just on the stuff that is obvious, like energy and cars and semi-trucks doesn't take into consideration any possibility of FSD being fully uh, on board or starting to do robo-taxis or, the robots, the Optimus robots starting to come off the line, all kinds of things that could just drive the stock to the moon. Okay, so that's number one. Let's take a look at the CPI. I said the other day that I was not going to make a prediction about the CPI, that I didn't have any more information than anybody else. But in my head, I was kind of expecting maybe it to be a little less, uh, 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 the inflation to have dropped a little bit more than it did. Um, we're still seeing it right now being almost right straight across, uh, and that's uh, sad, but the two things I mentioned the other day continue to be true, and that is oil is still sitting there bouncing against 80, and bonds did go up a full 25 basis points over the last few weeks. So if I, in my position, I continue to watch cryptocurrencies to see whether or not risk is coming back on. I look at oil to see the direction of the overall economy, and especially because energy, oil energy, goes all the way through the economy to food and everything else that touches everything. So I look at oil for that as evidence. If that starts to come down, I think we'll, we'll finally begin to see uh, the prices begin to moderate at least. And then the uh, third category I look at uh, is the bond market, and the bond market should be a better predictor than the Fed and has been a better predictor than the Fed as to where inflation is. Um, and so if the bonds start to, if the yields start to go back down to 3.5 or maybe even to 3.25, that would be a great indication that the bond market believes inflation is going to continue lower. Uh, right now, um, I'd say flat even. And Tesla has basically um, corrected, uh, the, the market I don't think thinks that Tesla is going to be dramatically affected by either continued inflation or by the uh, or by the interest rates at this point. Yes, they'll be affected. I'm sure the market is paying attention to these with regard to Tesla, but not like they were three months ago. All right. Um, so one of the reasons I think that the uh, market may be beginning to understand that Tesla is going to be just fine in a recession, just fine if interest rates goes up, just fine if there's additional inflationary pressure is because they've been showing what they can do with price. And you're, you might be wondering at this point, if you don't follow me, you might be wondering, even if you follow me, you may, Randy, what in the world? They keep raising the price of the Y, they keep lowering the price of the three, they come up with this great lease deal on the three, but they don't come up with a great, great lease deal on the Y. Is the three dead? Is, is the three in trouble? And the answer is, I don't know, but I don't think so. I think what's happening is, and I, and I didn't make this up, I saw a headline the other day, and it just made sense to me, and that is that the, there needs to be a wide enough spread between the three and the Y to make the three a good decision. If you're not sure which way you want to go, it might just be all about price. Um, we bought a Y because my wife just happens to like that style car. That's what she wanted. Uh, but if I was buying right now, I might be, I might be uh, in between. I might think that I want to go to a three because I'm kind of a sedan type guy. But the Y does have a lot of value benefits to it. So there has to be enough spread between those two to have it make sense. So I think what's happening in the marketplace in depends on you know where it is. It could be in China or in Australia or in Europe or here. Um, their markets are going to react differently, and that's the beauty of the pricing point capability that Tesla has by being direct to consumer, not going through dealers. So they can manipulate and play with those prices to do exactly what the, what the markets are asking for in order to make uh, the most amount of money uh, on, the, on all their product lines. So that's what's happening. So the why is going up? Why? Because the demand is huge. The three, the demand is not as great when people can definitely afford that why. And so you got to drop the price of the three, something 
in order to get people to be, okay, you know what? That's enough of a savings. I'm going to go for a three. All right. Um, in case you haven't noticed, the Ross Gerber poll results are in. And uh, Ross, the retail investors are saying, no, no, no. It wasn't even close, Ross. It was, I, I didn't look at the final numbers, but it was running something like 87 to 7% or something like that. I mean, Ross, no, the answer is don't run. You said you're consider. You said you're gonna run. You're gonna put your hat in the ring. Back out. You're gonna be. You're gonna look foolish because the, it doesn't look like the folks want you. And the comments that I got from the last video, the comments that I got on Twitter were all. I mean, not all. I did get one person said, "No, I think you should do it." One. One person said, "Yes, you should go." Everybody else was like, "No way, no how." I think you're misreading your audience, Ross, and I'd recommend that you not go that direction. Uh, by the way, Elon is speaking tomorrow, um, so I'll put a link in the description below as to uh, where where you be able to see that talk, and uh, that's really fun. Always like it when Elon goes on stage and starts to talk about the future, and that's what he's going to be doing. He also mentioned today that March one is going to be all about how wonderful the future is going to be, and I agree with him. I think the future is just going to be incredible. Uh, I think that that's that's why I want you know that's why I'm going to um, do this video tomorrow uh, that we'll be talking about what is going to be the impact. I mean, it's one thing to say, oh, we're going to we're going to go electric, the world is going to go electric, and EVs, and we're going to have you know all electric grid, and we're not going to we're going to rely less and less on gas and less and less on all the other petroleum products. Um, you know, but what does that really mean? What does that mean for the poorest people? What does that mean for the poorest countries? What does that mean for the middle class? What does it mean in terms of how life will be lived? What, what does it mean for some of the things that are happening in, in AI and the, and the robots and in, you know robots taking more jobs and all this type of thing? I'm going to do this video. It'll be kind of a general look at some of the issues that maybe you're thinking about already. Maybe these are things that are already on your heart. They've certainly been on my heart for quite a while now. Um, and I'll just be kind of laying out a general, a general idea of some of the things that we need to be thinking about, some of the things at least that I'm thinking about. And then maybe you'll think that that would be a good reason to get into Patreon with me and be able to, to be part of the discussion, part of uh, taking a look at all of these issues and then coming to some conclusions that might be reportable either as YouTube videos or, again, as uh, the third book in the trilogy, The Elon Musk Magic, which is still projected to be out late summer. So um, hope this has been helpful and interesting. You know what to do if it has been. And it's been great talking to you today.